What's up, y'all? Danny from Van Life Northwest coming to you today on this rainy afternoon in southern Washington with this 1995 Toyota Heist Super Custom. We just finished uh, fully overhauling this Super Custom mechanically, cosmetically, and have installed our custom camper interior called the Space Cabin. So this 95 is a KZH106, which means it has the 1KZTE 3 liter turbo diesel engine and has an automatic transmission, full-time four wheel drive, which is essentially all wheel drive. Now mentioning the transmission, I'm gonna go through a lot of work that we did to it and hopefully I'll remember it all. But since I m mentioned the transmission already, when this van came to us, it had an issue with shifting. It would not shift uh, directly from drive. It wouldn't start in the first gear. I think it would start in the second or third gear from what I recall, it's been a few months. But either way, that was a problem attributed to the shift solenoids in the transmission. In order to fix that, you have to drop the transmission pan and we replaced all three shift solenoids uh, with an OEM shift solenoid kit, which fixed the problem. While doing that, of course, any automatic transmission van that we sell uh, will get a ATF flush. ATF is automatic transmission fluid. We flush the automatic transmission, takes about 10 to 12 quarts to accomplish that. Speaking of fluids, uh, change most every fluid on this van and all of our vans that we sell, but front and rear diff gear oil, that's 7590. It has a transfer case that's also 7590 gear oil. We do, of course, motor oil and filter. It takes about seven and a quarter quarts with the filter at change. Coolant, so we do a coolant flush on every van that we sell. Um, air filter, fuel filter, all new fuel lines. And I mentioned coolant, so huge thing I've mentioned before in other videos, but I'll keep mentioning it because it is probably the biggest thing that you can do for any older vehicle like this. This is now 26 years old. All new coolant hoses. So no, we're not just talking about radiator hoses, which this van has four because it has two radiators, but every auxiliary coolant hose that works and is connected to that system. It has a front heater core, and it may be difficult to see these coolant hoses in here right now with the rain and this camera, but there's a front heater core. There's about three hoses that are replaced there are probably about half a dozen half inch and five eighths lines coming off of the engine itself. Normally this would have a rear heater core uh, to build this camper. We installed actually a Wabasto diesel heater, which runs uh, is essentially heated from the diesel tank. So there was no need to have a rear, two rear heaters essentially. So we bypassed that system and capped it. Whew, that's a mouthful, but uh, more work was done mechanically than that. Certainly, you can see that here, um, unlike the stock Heises, this van sits about two to two and a half inches higher, maybe a total of three inches higher ground clearance with these 235, 75, 15 BFG KO2 tires and our suspension lift. This lift is um, something that we developed when we first started working on these Hiaces, I just thought the Hiace was a great van, but its only fault was low ground clearance. Not really enough for camping, at least for what I liked to do camping. So we developed this lift kit for it. The kit we sell on our website as we do with, uh, as there are other products on our website that we sell as well too. Uh, while we're mentioning other products that we sell and that we have developed here, right here is our roof rack for the high super custom it's called pluto specs on this are for sale on our web, are, are available on our website in the product section this is an all aluminum roof rack that we built specifically for 
the High Super Custom. He uses aluminum extrusion for the crossbars. A little difficult to get up there and see everything, but it has um, attachment, for, uh, attachment points for a number of different style connectors and straps, both T-Track and L-Track style. Um, lightweight, and like I said, specifically di designed for this van. That's for sale on the website, and we can ship it. Mechanically, uh, we're not done. This van um, had a timing belt job, and to do that properly requires a timing belt. Not only that, but it has a tensioner and a, uh, and a tensioner pulley, which should be replaced, as well as a cam and crank oil seal, which we all also replace. I mentioned some cooling systems we did be uh, cooling system work we did before with the coolant lines, but we also replaced the thermostat, the fan clutch, the water pump, um, and let's see what else with the cooling. I think that's pretty much the whole cooling system has been gone through. Motor mounts too. Most every van we sell receives new motor mounts. Here is a Sony. Um, doubled in stereo with a backup cam that we've installed up there is the EGT gauge exhaust gas temperature very important gauge um, I've described what that gauge does in other videos so I won't get into it right now so of the upholstery from this era I feel like this is the nicest and by nice, so it wasn't actually the high end. This was actually considered the lower end trim model. Well, mid range, I guess there is lower, more like vinyl. But this trim here, this fabric that was used is quite nice. It holds up, it stays clean, and it's easy to clean and not quite as fancy as some of the limited model uh, upholsteries. Um, Stan's lucky enough to still have original floor mats, which is awesome. Uh, as we're coming down, so we did brake work to this. We rebuilt the front calipers. The calipers are no longer available from what I've been able to find. So we are able to rebuild them and have them be essentially like new. While doing that, the whole hub has to come apart, which means that we either replace or repack the bearings. I believe on this, we replace them, turn the rotors, new brake pads, and then we had to bleed the whole system. So that's front and rear as well too. So here's that shock part of the lift kit, new front and back for that. We also adjust the rear brakes to make sure that they're pulling consistently so that when you brake, the whole thing breaks evenly. This is lifted, like I said, but um, the ride quality, in my opinion, is actually improved from the stock height. It's not too high to where it makes it ride rough okay that's all the mechanical stuff this is our space cabin which you've been seeing as we walk around here the space cabin is a camper that we designed specifically for the heist super custom as mentioned i really liked the super custom and the heist when we first started working on them but there are certain things about it that needed improvement. One, the lift, like I mentioned before. Two was they never came with a camper. Perfect size, amazing features such as these, um, that they call triple sunroofs here. So this is actually one piece of glass up here. That pops up like a spoiler. This is one large piece of glass here that actually is fully retractable and has a shade here as well too, you can pull shut. And then the front pops up as well too, like a traditional um, over cab pop-up sunroof. Here's that larger piece of rear glass. You can kind of peek in there and see how big that is. A little difficult to see in this video, but and here's a detail on that roof rack as well too. But essentially, yes, the, the Super Custom did not come with a stock camper. Perfect size for it, in my opinion. Plenty enough room for the, uh, this is a seating, uh, or basically our folding bed. Um, so the bed, it, it's a bench on both sides, so it's a mirror. Bench there, if we come around the back, you can see what I'm talking about. 
bench here as well too. Now you can sit here and look out and use this table. This is the swing out table. Here it articulates and will come out and can be a prep surface here. Back here is two drawers, heavy duty 500 pound locking sliders that we use for all of the slides for these drawers, except for the silverware drawer, which really didn't need anything more than uh, the standard drawer slider. But here's some details here you can see in the drawer construction. They lock in and they lock out. So if you happen to be on a hill that was leaning forward, these drawers wouldn't slide this way. And then you can use them safely to use as a prep surface. A Coleman camp stove actually perfectly fits here for storage or under this. And this cutting board can lift up and there's more storage underneath. Both of these are unlocked like this. You just give them a little slam and they're shut. Now to get back to the front, we can mention, I can't do this while filming, but this table here, this leg for it, can be brought back up to the front of the van and attached to the forward mount. So there's two mounts for this table here. So that table then creates a surface and a table that will come in here for the passenger sitting on the left but the passenger sitting on the right here can utilize this flip up table. So this comes up like this, slides, locks into place, and that would open up that kept, uh, kitchen counter surface or prep surface up. And if you want to open it up twice as much as that, you would flip this mechanism up and pull this here and flip it over. And there you have a much larger desk and prep surface here. This is where I like to make my coffee in the morning. I'll store my coffee uh, pour over setup right up here and grinds. And I've got a little jet boil I like to use for my coffee in the morning. Perfect prep setup here. And usually that's happening when the bed's down. I'll leave the bed down, fire up the heater, which the output, the heat output is right here. I'll fire that up. It actually blows up underneath the blankets and it's just the coziest, bougiest <laughs> morning coffee in a van. I think I could imagine at least in a van this size. So that heater dial is right there on the top right, Wabasto. It's a very basic rheostat, which I find simpler the better for something like that. The top left is a master shutoff switch for the refrigerator. Now, I find that I'd still may, if I'm driving this around town for the week, I may still want to use the lights and some other functions for it, but maybe don't want the refrigerator running constantly. So that was the reason for installing that master shutoff switch. So this refrigerator is a um, iso, isotherm and it has a refrigerator and freezer. I believe it's a 65 liter size, perfect size for a van this size, perfect size for two, maybe three people to store their food. Here is that utensil drawer I mentioned earlier, 24 inches deep. Locks in. Here is the storage drawer, I mean the storage cabinet underneath the sink for the fresh water. This is one of two five gallon water tanks. This one happens to feed the uh, sink. The sink has got uh, a pump, so it's all electric. And that faucet actually has a switch integrated into it. So when you turn on that faucet, the pump um, starts up. Under here would go the second, uh, which I don't actually have in here right now, but the second of the five gallon water storages. And under that lives the Wabasto heater. Not often would you have to get to that, that's why it's tucked away, but it is in a nice place that is, in fact, out of the way. So now we can put this table back, get this down. So the bed, um, back to the bed. 
the bed is locked in with these sliders as well too. This may be difficult to do with one hand, but I will try. There it goes. So you unlock both of those sliders here. You can step back, boom. And then there's the bed down. It has four panels. It's about four feet wide. By about six and a half feet long. I'm about six, three, so I really wanted this bed to fit me comfortably. So it's not six and a half feet, sorry. It's six foot three length of bed as well too. With the bed down, the only drawer that you can't access reg uh, readily is that one there. It is actually a large um, drawer that we use often to store bedding, things like that. Now to put this back up, there's a strap here you can pull this way and it will lift the whole bed setup up. We can also do it another way from the back, which is kind of like the trick secret way to do it. I'll show you that in a second, actually. Might as well show you the closet while we're at it. Closet slider um, doors will lock shut. And in here, we have some space. It's good to kind of roll up. I usually roll up clothing and extra, you know, puffer jacket and things like that. Stuff it in there. Down in this hole, actually, is where I like to put dirty clothes. And fun enough, you can actually access that compartment this way, actually. So these are on sliders, lock shut. Here's another look at some of these overhead drawers here. All wood on the inside. So to put up the bed, you can easily just pull this here and then it's up and it locks in just like that. Very easy up and down for the bed mechanism. Here we have one of the articulating well, reading lights, spotlights, pretty useful for, say, using um, this prep surface. Pull this out, adds a good amount of light here for prepping food, for reading, for actually illuminating these drawers up here. And there's another right here toward the front of the van. Both have USB plugs in the bottom to charge your phone, what have you. Here's that articulating table. Articulates in just like that and can be stored in that position or the front position when driving. Just in the front position, it must be moved in order to put the bed down. And I cut myself off talking about the electronics panel, um, but on that panel also is a battery monitor on the bottom there. That, uh, the parameters of the battery can be accessed via Bluetooth. And we currently are using a 200 amp hour AGM battery to power this van, which is more than enough for these appliances. This thing will run over a week, I believe, without charging. It also has some USB ports and a SIG lighter. Now the, the battery system is, um, has a battery isolator as well too which means that it will charge from the alternator while it's driving. Um, and it also has a shore power charger, which means when you're at home or at a campsite, you can plug it in and it will actually charge the whole battery system. So once again, this is called the space cabin. And we built this space cabin in this 95 Toyota Heist super custom van. We've had this van and been working on it for several months. Um, really a lot of work went into it, much above and beyond just uh, <laughs> all the mechanical stuff, which was quite a bit, the camper, and then just fine-tuning, fine-tuning, fine-tuning as you go. And there is a lot to it, a lot more than I mentioned here. But long story short, this van is sold, and the owner will be happily picking it up tomorrow and taking it back to California where it will live an adventure and hopefully have a long second life. But if you're looking for something like this, reach out, say hi, find us on Instagram, the Van Life Northwest, and on our website, vanlifenorthwest.com. You can do slash space cabin 
and see the specs for the space cabin. We could do slash products and see our lift kit, our racks, and some other goodies we're working on as well, too. All right, y'all. Hope you're having a good evening. Stay safe, stay dry. We'll see you soon.